Right, now this is the A9, otherwise known as the Cruiser Mark I. I'm afraid it's very badly hemmed in by other vehicles, which is why over here in the VCC we've had to jack up the cameras to give it a different angle. And it does mean that things like the suspension, which are quite vital, are going to have to be filmed separately and done afterwards because uh, it's just impossible to film them with the thing as it is and with me standing here talking about it. Now the A9 Cruiser Mark I was the very first cruiser tank in British service, which historically is quite important. When it was first built, it was actually going to be the medium tank Mark IV. And they decided that they'd change the name to Cruiser. The role of the two tanks didn't matter too much. It was more or less the same anyway. So they called it the Cruiser Mark I. But it's always known as the A9. It had no name worth talking about. There weren't that many of them anyway. I think they only built about 125. Vickers Armstrong built some and the remainder were built by Harland and Wolfe in Belfast. But they were built in very limited numbers. They actually date from 1936. So in effect, it's a pre-war tank. And by the time it was committed to action, which was first in France in 1940, and then in the Western Desert, it was getting not only a bit long in the tooth, but a bit difficult to up armour. It was built to armour of 14 mm standard. The trouble was that if you tried to increase it to 30 mil, as they did with most cruisers, you ended up with a, the turrets jamming against the driver's cab, so you couldn't do it with this one. It had to stay thinly armoured. But it's still a very interesting tank. The reason, by the way, the turrets are there is that when this tank was designed, these separate turrets with the machine guns were designed to sweep an area of about 120 degrees or more to the front of the tank. They were actually designed for taking out enemy machine gun positions. How anyone was supposed to see anything from inside them is another matter. But that's what they were designed for. And it does give the tank a, um, a kind of well-armed look. I remember talking to a chap who was as a young officer had served in France in 1940. And he said while he and his infantry were guarding a bridge, one of these tanks came up behind him. And he said with the main turret going left and right, as if trying to sniff out the enemy, and the machine gun turrets roaming about, he thought it was the mightiest thing since the tank had been invented. Little did he know, but that was the impression it left on the average infantryman who saw it for the first time. It's powered by an AEC engine in the back there, petrol engine, and it was actually a London bus engine that was stacked in the back, a six-cylinder engine, which drove the tank along at a reasonable speed, but really not very fast. Typical of most of the um, cruisers, if you like, those early ones anyway. It mounts the two-pounder gun in the turret with a coaxial Vickers machine gun. The reason that tray is under the turret is to catch the spent ammo or the spent rounds from the Vickers gun. When it fired, it spat them out and they all fell in there and therefore you had something to take back with you at the end of the day. That's the only reason the tray's there. The turret is a, was modelled on a, an earlier model that had been devised for British tanks. And it's got the radio, or would have the radio in the back. It had a lamp fitting in the turret there and the sighting vane on top, as you can see, with a the lookout for the commander, a periscope. No cupola. They didn't like, so many people were said to be having their heads shot off looking out the cupola. They decided to do away with them. The driver's cab is located at the front here. It's between the two turrets, which means that the cab is a crew of six altogether, being a driver, two machine gunners, and three men in the turret, commander, loader, and, and gunner in the turret. So it's a six-man crew, except that in the desert they hardly bothered to put the chaps in these little turrets because they roasted, for among other things, and no one liked that. The two-pounder in those days was still a very good gun. 40 millimeter caliber, firing solid shot only, and quite an excellent piece as an anti-tank gun. The trouble was it got outdated very quickly. And although we had a six-pounder on the stocks, it was a long time before we were able to introduce it. And most of these tanks weren't capable of taking it. 
So it sort of did out its service as a two pounder armed tank. It's um, fairly, as I say, thinly armoured, 14 millimeter, and the suspension is worth looking at. It's, it was known as the Bright Idea suspension. It was designed or devised by Sir John Carden, who was Vickers' chief tank designer. He was given the sort of rules, if you like, for developing this tank, and this is the, the thing he came up with. When the tank was first built, it had the six road wheels all more or less evenly spaced, and it had a nasty habit of throwing its tracks. And it wasn't until they made the two units, which were on bogies, they were sort of hinge bogies, and made them separate, as this one is, that they solved the problem of the tracks being thrown off all the time. But in many respects, it's an interesting vehicle, but really a bit under-armoured for use in the Second World War. Trouble is, we had nothing else. It's been the markings of 1st Armoured Division, which used them in France, and the other marking on the front is a shipping marking, telling the, anyone who wants to understand the code which regiment the tank belonged to and that kind of thing. It was a companion to the A-10, which was said originally to be the infantry tank version. But we'll look at the A-10 separately later on. But um, it's, it's a tank worth looking at. And really it ought to be on show, but unfortunately it isn't. But there we are, that's the A-9. The cruiser Mark I, the first of the cruisers. It's also somewhat grubby. We were going to clean it, but then we thought, oh, a lot of trouble. So you're seeing it in its natural state, or unnatural state, if you like, covered in dust. But it is the only A9, there's one in India, I think, as well, but otherwise it's the only A9 to survive anywhere. OK, now, if you enjoyed that um, bit of film, or any of the bits of film we've made, if you'd subscribe to YouTube, that helps us a great deal, and more so, if you'll support Patreon, because that's something that we really can do with. Thanks very much.